My name is Dean Bogg and this is episode 13 of Neighborhoods. If you're new to the show, it works a little something like this. Every week, I explore and document a different Pittsburgh neighborhood and I bring you along for the ride. Each episode contains my very own opinions, interviews with local residents, excuse me so I'd rather not be filmed, sorry, and, and the binary, binary ranking, ranking of, of the, the neighborhood. neighborhood. Background. They're right. breathing hard. That's your old right. point. Hello. When I was growing up, I always thought that air conditioning was what killed our neighborhoods. You used to go down Boggs Avenue, everybody sat out on their porch, and they'd t the people would be talking five houses away. As soon as air conditioning come in, you don't see nobody on their porches sitting there no more. No, they want to stay in the house and stay nice and cool instead of sitting out. I mean, and that's what I think these phones are doing today. Younger people are moving back in the city. They're riding bikes instead of buying cars. They're doing all the right things. They're trying to get people to invest in public transportation. But I think it's a it's a net positive rather than a negative. And um, over time, that's going to bear fruit. Now I get what you're saying. Older folks that he was talking about getting moved out because of the gentrification. They can't afford to live here anymore. There has to be something politically done with property taxes, not just in Pittsburgh, but across the state. You can sort of divide Mount Washington into Grandview Avenue and everything else. Grandview offers a rather grand view of the city. It is easily the selfie capital of Pittsburgh. The architecture on Grandview is way different than anywhere else in Pittsburgh. The houses look like they belong in the Hollywood Hills. I think the funky architecture here can be attributed to three things. One, the people up here have a lot of money. Two, the materials used in modern homes are better for building houses on the side of cliffs. And three, it makes sense to have houses with huge windows so that you can see this spectacular view of the city. Even the houses that do resemble your classic Pittsburgh house often have these weird metal boxes built on the back of them. I'm assuming it's for support so the houses don't fall off the side of the cliff. There are also a lot of bougie restaurants over here. They're super expensive because you're paying for the food and the view. Back off a bit from Grandview Ave, you will find a quaint and classically Pittsburgh neighborhood. It's mostly residential, but the business district does house a boatload of adorable and locally owned businesses. Sure, a little bit. Um, I grew up in Mount Washington. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't live here anymore. I live in Beachview, but uh, most of my life was spent running these streets. <laughs> I'll be 40 this month coming, so. It wasn't as busy as it is now. There wasn't, there was always a tourist attraction because of Grandview, so that was the main attraction of Mount Washington, but, um, everybody knew each other and you still see that with the older people that come into the restaurant that still know each other and share stories you had to venture out to go to like the mall or something but anything you absolutely needed was right here and is that still the case no it's not i mean the grocery store is there and the ice cream shop is down there and there's still little things but you find yourself having to leave the area more and more to get basic stuff. There's a lot more drug influence, I think, around, and you'll find that in any area, really. It's no different from any other area, but people overdosing behind the bar or in the bathroom, you have to watch your bathrooms to, if random people come in without ordering anything, just use the bathroom. Washington seems kind of idyllic, and in a lot of ways it is, but multiple people have mentioned that the area is suffering from the opioid crisis. I don't know enough about the opioid epidemic to feel comfortable commenting on it, but I do highly recommend watching the documentary Heroin by Elaine McMillian Sheldon. It takes place in Huntington, West Virginia, and it shows the stark reality of what is going on in our region. Listen, I'm not going to pay 
sure she gets to Hawaii if she's going to be controlling us the whole time we're going to be there. That's insane. Go rogue, what she wants to have, if she wants to do each of our schedules. She means, like, first of all, Can't talk about Mount Washington without mentioning the inclines. At peak usage, Pittsburgh was home to 19 inclines, and Mount Washington alone had five. Today, only two remain, and they're preserved as historical landmarks. I've been using the incline all week to get up to Mount Washington with my bike, and using it with a purpose has made me feel a connection to the workforce that's been commuting on these things for a century. The inclines are a type of transportation known as funiculars. A funicular is sort of like a gondola or a ski lift, except the cables sit underneath the car and the car runs on tracks. At the top of the Duquesne incline sits a tiny but top-notch museum about Pittsburgh and its transportation history. Originally, the only way to get up and down Mount Washington was a trail. Around the turn of the century, that trail became a massive set of city steps that were torn down in 1935. Then in 1870 came the Monongahela Incline, which made it much easier for workers to get up and down. Rail cars began coming up here in 1904, and then finally, in 1928, PJ McArdle Roadway was open. It's going to be not going to be... Sir, some tourists here. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, just step on the orange, sure. Step on the orange right here. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you like Pittsburgh, all right? I live here, but Oh, you live here. You don't live here, no. So far, we're loving it. It's good. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. North Carolina. North Carolina. There you are, North Carolina. We have people from Raleigh, we have people from Green, from Greensboro. Happy New Year. Thank you. Yeah, but this is, um... Pure caffeine, it's like an energy drink. Yeah. The other coffee at a man, it gets all water, and you gotta go to the bathroom with it. This at least it wakes you up and it gives you a little burst. Yeah. Well, I've been here 28 years. 28 years. Yes. Okay. Well, people up here in Mount Washington, they use this for transportation to get to town. People that use it to go to the stadiums if there's a football game or a penguin game or some something going on downtown. Um, mostly workers up here, but in the summer it's all tourists, and there's a lot of tourists that come here because it, in Pittsburgh it's an attraction. They come here, and this is one of the things that's on the manifest to do in Pittsburgh, to see in Pittsburgh, to ride one of the only three remainder inclines left in Pittsburgh, probably in the whole United States. I don't know if there's any, any more like this one. I'm known in Pittsburgh as Mario on the incline. Look on Twitter, Sharpsburg Mario. I do the pics on there with Colin Dunlap, Chris Mack from the 93 fan, and um, we do a lot of promotions for the kids. and. The, the kids that are in need, and, and that's what we try to do is help the people in need up here. It's so pretty. It's so open. It's like an amphitheater. It is. Wait, wait, wait. Walking. Everybody's seen what? Funambulism. What's like funambulism? It's the practice of balancing and walking on stuff, you know? Like, there's... The, the Back in Greek times, the words acrobat, that meant, like, a person specifically who performed on rope. There was acrobat, who's someone who did aerial maneuvers on these things, and there's neurobats, people that did the high lines. So, like, this concept of balancing on things is, I think, inherent to a lot of people because we spend all day on our two feet. Like, we, we naturally balance. So to push ourselves to an extreme of, of challenging ourselves, this, that's, that goes beyond just like the slacklining movement that's been around since the 80s, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, circus, you know, like all these people in gymnastics, everyone has their form of funambulism. 
it's just ours takes the form of like almost like rock climbing where we use these kinds of materials and <laughs> suffer fest through type 2 fun <laughs> Suffer fest through type 2 fun? I have no idea what that means. Um, you know, like, sometimes you gotta, I don't know, if you're gonna want to ex experience a certain extreme of something, whether that's happiness or elation or joy or pleasure, you have to, in order to get to that extreme, experience other negative extremes. Everything comes in balance, right? So, like, if you want to have this awesome experience of looking out at the city, then yeah, I have to come out here and haul this webbing across and bring a hundred pound pack up here. And like, the weather's not optimal. And like, yeah, my stuff's gonna get wet. And <laughs> but like at the end of the day, that's how you experience that out there. It's the only way. The outdoors community is possibly my favorite thing about Pittsburgh. It's an inclusive group of beautiful, kind, and environmentally conscious people. The organization Climb Pittsburgh recently wrote a letter of support to the city, and they're looking to collect as many signatures as possible. If you're interested in learning more, I'll provide a link below. Oh, oh, Jim, look, look, there's a photographer. What? There's a photographer. Where? Show him your wings. Oh, yeah, you like that? You like that? Oh, he's so oh, handsome. Yeah. I think I'm going to stop the whole stolen bike test thing and replace it with the trash bag time trial. Um, I really don't like that I'm soliciting crime and also this is my only means of transportation. I'm giving Mount Washington a 1 on the park scale because of the greenways that exist here and Grandview Park. Although Grandview Park isn't as big as Shenley or Frick, it does contain one of the best views of the city. Also, this looks like a primo sledding hill within city limits. Similar to Spring Hill, Mount Washington is a neighborhood that's pretty clean except for the green spaces. For whatever reason, these green spaces seem to be used as a public trash can. I'm challenging everybody that's watching this video to pick up one piece of garbage sometime this week. Alrighty, that took about three minutes and 30 seconds. Um, I don't know what this chunk of land is or who owns it, but I think it would be a killer space for the park. It's about as good as it gets. It's about as good as it gets. <laughs> it is. It, you know what? For for the whole theme of uh, Pittsburgh just being a nice place, running into you here by chance, I, I think that says a lot. It speaks volumes. <laughs> That's it for Mount Washington, but I do have two things to say before you go. One comes from my friend Margaret. If you're not feeling great about entering the new year or new decade, that's okay. You don't need to be jazzed up and full of momentum like everybody appears to be on social media. January kind of fucking blows, and if you're feeling depressed or anxious about the new year, that's okay. And two, I'm launching a Patreon. Patreon is a website separate from YouTube that allows artists to be funded by people who enjoy their work. You can give any amount that you want, but I have broken it down into tiers, uh, each tier coming with additional perks. So starting at $1 a month, you get the ability to vote on which neighborhood I cover next. I'll suggest three neighborhoods, and the one with the most votes is where I'll go. Uh, at $10, you start getting behind the scenes footage, by donating, you are enabling me to pursue what I love and 
live out my dream, essentially. Um, my dream is to be a filmmaker and a YouTuber and a documentarian. Um, and I currently feel like I'm achieving those things, but it's not sustainable at the moment. Um, so if you've been enjoying these videos and you'd like to, and you'd like me to keep them coming, um, I will greatly appreciate any amount that you can give, even if it's just a buck. Uh, thank you for watching up to this point, and, uh, and I'll see you next week with a neighborhood that will be decided upon by the Patreons. Okay. Cool. I think that's, I think that's all I have to say. Oh god, that was a mouthful.